Hey guys, welcome to today's video lecture. I'm going to be talking to you today about animal communication and the trade-offs that communicating animals face when they're trying to communicate effectively. Now before I do, I am uh, in the middle of a swamp forest uh, just outside Kuching um, on Borneo. And I'm here to do a bit of field work which I'll discuss with you a little bit later on in this episode. Okay, so to communicate effectively, animals have to be conspicuous. Otherwise, that signal will not get through the environment effectively and the receiver will not be able to detect it. So effective communication is all about detectability. Now the problem with doing that is that you might not only attract the attention of your intended receiver, another conspecific, you might actually uh, attract the attention of an unwanted receiver. For example, parasites, but in particular, predators. So the more flashy and showy you are, or the louder you communicate, the more likely you're going to attract uh, predators as well as um, be uh, communicating effectively to those conspecifics. So there are lots of classic examples in animal behaviour of how animals cope with this trade-off. Um, and I'm here on Borneo to try and test uh, one of those hypotheses um, in relation to how animals can remain conspicuous while also trying to avoid predators. Now one of the key ways is that you can just be very savvy about when you decide to communicate. Obviously, if you're detecting a potential uh, predation threat, perhaps you want to be trying nice and quiet. Otherwise you might draw attention to yourself. But of course, if you don't detect a lot of predators, you can be as showy and loud and as attractive as possible to those uh, female receivers that often these signals are being given during mate choice. Now the experiment that I'm doing here um, uh, in, on Borneo is a pretty basic one. So we have a bunch of lizards uh, they are from the genus uh, Draco. They are unusual for lots of different things, but two main ones. First of all, they're flying lizards, which is awesome. So they have uh, wings and they glide through the forest. Um, and the second really awesome thing about these lizards is that they have a bright, colorful dewlap, which they flick out um, during territorial disputes and also to attract mates as well. Now the key thing about that dewlap is that it's really, really conspicuous. It's brightly coloured and that's by design, right? It's trying to be detectable in that surrounding environment. Now one of the ways that these lizards may be able to um, minimise predation, so attracting attention not only of those receivers but other predators, is by using a dewlap which is intermittent. They can choose to switch it on and off. Whereas other animals, and in particular other lizards, have brightly coloured um, body coloration, which they also use during uh, territorial disputes and mate choice as well. But you can't turn those signals off, right? They're always visible. So presumably you're going to be more attractive to mates and more intimidating to rivals, but you're also going to attract attention of those predators. So, the idea that I'm testing is to determine whether lizards that do the intermittent flicks, so they switch that signal on when they need it to be on, um, do they uh, suffer lower rates of predation. So the experiment is set up um, to uh, deploy a bunch of robotic lizards with a plasticine model mounted on the top. Now the plasticine model is actually moulded from an actual Draco lizard. It looks pretty realistic. Um, and the idea is, is that a predator, for example a bird or a large monitor lizard or a snake um, or a bush rat, what have you, will strike at that model and it will leave an impression in that plasticine. It's actually a really effective means of measuring predation um, in uh, the field. Okay guys, so the experiment it's pretty straightforward in terms of its design. Uh, there will be uh, three treatments. Um, the first treatment will be uh, the robot with the plasticine model on the top with the dewlap going in and out, uh, just like the animal does in real life. The colour of the dewlap has been matched to the same coloration as the uh, focal uh, Draco lizard. It's the prey item. Uh, it's an off yellow. Uh, the second treatment will have the dewlap permanently out, again with the plasticine model on top. Um, the third treatment, which is really a control, a negative control, 
uh, doesn't have the dewlap at all, and it will just have the uh, plasticine lizard on the top. Um, so there's no conspicuous movement and there's no conspicuous coloration. So we call it a negative control. We're anticipating few predatory attacks on the model lizard as a consequence. The mechanism for the robot is pretty straightforward. The whole system is powered by this uh, set of uh, AA batteries. This cartridge is actually empty of batteries at the moment. The dewlap is extended and retracted um, using this servo that flicks the dewlap in and out. Uh, that servo is controlled by the circuit board which I've programmed uh, to extend and retract that dewlap at exactly the same speed, same duration, and same type of sequence as these lizards do in real life. And the whole system is also connected to this light sensor uh, which detects basically whether it's dawn or dusk um, and switches the robot off um, overnight. These are uh, diurnal lizards, so they're only displaying and active during the day. So we want the robot to mimic that and shut off um, overnight. Okay, so this is a uh, fairly typical of what we get for a uh, impressions left on on these uh, plasticine models uh, indicative of predation we have these uh, fairly dramatic um, uh, claw marks bite marks along the side there um, pencil uh claw marks or beak marks on the back um, you may not be able to see it but there's also uh, quite a bit of um, piercings um, going on around the face as well it's often quite typical uh, in these experiments to get a lot of uh, predation concentrated uh, towards the head.